Hey guys. Well, I've had a lot of questions about ClearPath servo motors. And even when I was initially building the Precision Matthews, I was asked several times whether or not I was going to go with ClearPath servos. Well, that was about a year ago and at the time, I didn't want to make the initial investment into clear paths. The cost between the lead shine three phase stepper motors and the clear path was about threefold. So I made the decision to go with the three phase stepper motors, which at the time I thought would have been the best option. I've had about a year now to run the machine with the lead shine stepper motors. And although they've worked fine and I haven't really had any issues with the stepper motors, they run cool. However, the clear path servos are becoming more popular and I decided that it would be a good idea to check into them a little bit further. So I contacted clear path and got in touch with an engineer, gave them all this specifications for my particular meal and I spoke with a lady named Bridget she was very helpful answered a lot of my questions and went over the options available to me I gave her the specifications for my machine and she ran that information through a simulator and got back with me on which clear path servos she recommended for my machine. Now the SD series step and direction clear pass servos are what we're going to go with. So let's take a look at those models. Now if you look at the model numbers on the servo motors you will three see that there are three different designations. We have a P, an S, and a D. Now the difference between those three are the D model is for high speed and low torque. Uh, you can see this by the max speed RPM. The S model is designed more for torque and less speed. Uh, you can see this again with the RPM rated at 1860 on this particular model and the speed is 16, uh, excuse me, and the torque is 165. Whereas on the D for the same model designation, uh, your torque is 47, but your speed is 4000. And then next is the P designation, which is a combination of good torque and good speed and you can see that how it the torque is 415 and the speed is 4000. There are two different model numbers that ClearPath recommended for the Precision Matthews. The SDSK 3411S was recommended for the X and Y axis. Now this as you can see this is the lowest NEMA 34 size motor they have but it is the S version which is high torque. Now just because it's high torque doesn't mean you're going to sacrifice speed. The rapids here will still be from the calculations that they came up with around 200 inches per minute for rapids which on a machine this size is extremely fast. So I don't think there's going to be any concerns there. Now looking at these 3411S, you can see that the cost for this servo motor is $328. But you can bump up to a 21 series motor, the 3421S, for just a few dollars more. Now the torque on the 21 is 1,094 ounces 
whereas the 11 is 638. Now the 638 is right in line with the lead shine stepper motors that I currently have. So I don't think there's going to be any problem with these. However, for the difference in the amount between the 11 and the 21, I decided that I'm going to go with the 3421S. Now this will be for my X and Y axis. And again, this should give me rapids around 200 inches per minute. Now for the shaft seal, I'm not going to go with any shaft seals. Uh, the way my motors are mounted, I'm, I haven't had any problem with any kind of coolant getting in, in there, but you could go with the shaft seals. Also, they have a regular and enhanced version. The regular version gives you 800 counts per revolution. I'm personally going to just go with the regular. Uh, the enhanced option, I'm not sure, let's see. The enhanced option adds about $50 to the cost of the motor. So you're looking at $150 or so. 115 dollars more for the enhanced version. So for the X and the Y, I'm going with the 3421S. Now for the Z axis, I already know that my head and all weighs around 100 pounds with the motor I have currently have. I'm going to be adding the belt, belt drive and power draw bar, which is going to add probably another 20 pounds. ClearPath recommended that I go with the 3421S for the Z axis. However, again, I'm going to bump it up one more size and I'm going to go with the 3432S. Now this is going to give me 1,396 ounce inches of torque versus the 1,094. And again, the difference in price is, you know, $30. So I just felt like that's going to uh, help prevent any problems in the future with the extra added weight. Uh, the rated speed again is 950 RPMs which will give me rapids around 195 inches per minute or so, which is plenty fast for, again, for a machine this size. Now for the power supply, ClearPath recommends that you get their power supply. However, I'm going to be adding a rotary tool changer which I will also power with the ClearPass servo. And later on, I might add a fourth axis or a rotary table, which would also be powered with the ClearPath servo. The power supplies that ClearPath offers are the IPC5. And it's only rated at 500 watts. So I, I did some the numbers on the ClearPass and I'm going to be pushing probably about 600 watts or more with just the three axis. Looks like 216 for the X and Y for the 3421 and around 250 for the 32. So even though they're not all going to be moving at the same time at peak, I decided instead of spending the money on two of these that I would get a just your standard Tordal power supply. So the one I'm looking at is at cnc4pc.com and this is a 1440 watt 72 volt DC 20 amp Tordal power supply. Um, this should be twice as much as I need 
uh, and I shouldn't have any problems with not having enough power. You want to have enough power to run all of your stepper motors as well as any loss from uh, G, uh, regenerating, regenerative braking. So I'm going to go with this particular power supply from CNC for PC. Now I checked with Bridget at ClearPath and she said that this particular power supply, I shouldn't have any problems running the ClearPath servos. Now for the cabling, for the ClearPath servos, you're going to need power cables to run to the ClearPath motors as well as control cables. So I'm going, I decided to go with the 55 foot control cable. It has the molded end on both ends and I'm going to make three cables out of this. Uh, the Z axis is up out of the way so I don't really need to have a water resistant connection there so I'll just purchase some mini Molex connectors and add one to the Z axis cable and then then I'll use the two molded ones for the X and the Y. Uh, same thing for the power cable I'm going to just buy one of the 55 foot and also use them for X and Y again they have the molded in on each end and I'll cut and make three cables out of this and use uh, some four pin mini Molex connectors and just make my own cable for the Z axis again. Uh, this way I figure I can save a little money. I'm not quite sure that the 10 foot cables are going to be quite long enough. Also I have heard that you might want to get the USB port cable because uh, some that you have laying around may not be suitable and work correctly with the clear path. So might be a good idea to go ahead and just pick up the USB port cable for tuning your servo motors. Now if you'd like to see these clear path servos in action on a Precision Matthews, you can stop by a friend of mine's YouTube channel. Wyatt Hopkins and he has recently installed ClearPass servos on his Precision Matthews. I'll post a link in the video description and you can stop by and check out these ClearPaths in action. I'll probably be purchasing these and installing these in the next four to six weeks. Uh, I want to get the belt drive finished and then I'm going to, once I break it down, I'm going to install the servos. I'll also po post the recommendations from ClearPath as well as the particular servo motors that I'm going to be using for my build. Um, total cost, it looks like ClearPath is going to be $1,311. And then also I'll need to pick up some of these plum couplings. These are 12 by 12 and I'm going to bore the 12 millimeter out to 12.7 millimeter to fit on the half inch shafts for the clear pass servos. The power supply is going to be 240 with shipping and now this is a 1440 watt so this should be plenty for up to at least six axes and uh, I'm only going to be running max five so we should be good there. So I'm really excited to be getting these. Uh, it looks like total it's going to be probably uh, around $1,600 with the cabling. So at least a thousand dollars more than the stepper motors I currently have. So it is a big investment and it is something that you uh, definitely want to consider. But I think overall the ClearPass servos are going to be uh, perform much better on the Precision Matthews. That wraps up this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to comment. Thanks for watching the videos. Thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe and most importantly, be safe.